Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lick MRI. And this is a 54-year-old gentleman who complains of left-sided ear pain and recurrent left-sided ear infections. And on this axial view, we see his right eye, left eye. This is his nose here. And on this view, we see the left ear, which is this little thing out here. Deep to the ear, we see the region of the temporal bone called the mastoid portion of the temporal bone. And we see this asymmetric. On the right, we see darkness. This is filled with air and little bony struts like honeycombs. This is normal. On the left side, those air cavities are filled with fluid, which show up as bright. So this patient has fluid or inflammation within these mastered air cells. Sometimes this can be sterile fluid, and the patients are asymptomatic. We just see it incidentally. Other times they can have active infection or inflammation that causes pain. And in that case, we call it mastoiditis. So in this patient, they were symptomatic, so we would call this left mastoiditis that does correlate with his history of recurrent ear infections and pain, and there's some temporal, uh, the lower aspect of the left mastoid portion of the temporal bone, those little bright areas of fluid or inflammation. Now, the patient has another finding, and that's really why I'm showing this video. They have demyelinating plaque, it looks like. So if we roll up, we see the left lateral ventricle, right lateral ventricle. We see around the rim of the ventricle, bright signal. This is demyelinating plaque that hugs the ventricles. We call this the pericolossal white matter or deep periventricular white matter. In this case, there's a little horizontal lesion here that's very typical, a little transverse band of bright signal. And if we look on this view here, we'll be able to see these same lesions hugging the ventricles. There's one right here that radiates outward, typical for multiple sclerosis. Over here, more of a globular appearance. There's even a little bit of atrophy associated with this one here. The ventricle has some uh, pokes out underneath that because there's atrophy of the brain parenchyma. Now this patient also has lesions in their cortex. So MS typically does the deep periventricular white matter or pericolossal white matter, but sometimes it can also involve other portions of the brain, including the cortex. So right here we have a cortical lesion corresponding to this area over here. And as we go up and down, we can see more and more of these cortical lesions. So let me slow down here. Here's a lesion on the left. Looks like a C-shaped lesion here involving the cortex or cortex and subcortical white matter. Here's another lesion on the right. Another, another small lesion back here, more posterior. One over here, anterior. And as we go on down, there's one over here. So this is a case of not only periventricular white matter disease, but also cortical lesions that are scattered in a patient with a suspected multiple sclerosis. Uh, other places patients get MS, very commonly they'll get demyelinating plaque down in the brain stem and also sometimes the cerebellum, sometimes upper cord, but this patient did not have any obvious lesions there. Just the periventricular lesions and these bilateral scattered cortical lesions. Thank you very much.